Hello and welcome back to Star Trek Resurgence and we're here on the bridge of the Resolute and I actually just had to play through the entire scene of me talking to the captain just now because apparently it didn't save <laughs> up until that point but don't worry I basically chose the exact same things and uh, yeah we can now sit in the command chair. Commander, Chief Engineer Chovak needs to lower the structural integrity field. He's sent a crew out to recalibrate the emitters in response to the danger posed by the storm. We just need your go-ahead. Permission granted. Lowering structural integrity field, now. Entering maintenance mode. Condition blue. The storm is getting worse. Looks like they turned off the SIF. Great. Let's get to that emitter. Every time we're out here, I half expect to see her in pieces again. She's still got some scars on her. It adds character. When I joined Starfleet, all I wanted was a ride out of town. But this isn't exactly how I pictured it. On the outside of the ship? <laughs> no. Sometimes it feels like we're just part of the machinery. Don't you want more than that? I mean, Starfleet is noble and all, but it's still a machine. A massive, massive machine. Now, what are you complaining about? We got the best seat in the house out here. You wanted to get away. I enlisted because I didn't want to wait years just to get out and see the galaxy. I wanted to go somewhere, see new worlds, look up at a sky no one's ever seen before. Just because I'm cranking a hyperspanner up in a Jeffrey's tube today doesn't mean that's all I'll ever be. Diaz to Commander Chovak. We are at the SIF emitter. Acknowledged. You may proceed with the recalibration. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Now it's my turn. Okay, now... Oh, two things at once. Oh, no. I told you in the previous episode. Two things at once. Very difficult for me and my brain. Okay, let's open that up. And we're going to have to... Oh, no. What are we taking out? What are we taking out? What is this? I need my... Ah. <laughs> Okay, wait, I was thinking it was going to be some kind of technologically advanced name, but no, no, it's just the calibration tool. Okay, let's pick that up. Beginning recalibration. And now we have to align the SIF. T tune nodes to center the circular indicators. Okay, so now here's the thing. I am absolutely awful at puzzles. Okay, wait. How do I... How do I actually do that? I... Wait a minute. Ah, there we go. Okay, just had to make sure that we didn't use it too much. Too much power was bad. Needed to, needed to do it a little bit gently. Commander Westbrook, right? Chief Science Officer. You remembered my name and my rank. Impressive. Yes, I am the Chief Science Officer, and I have the dubious honor of being the most senior officer on this bridge. I know this ship inside and out. Better than just about anyone. What a very impressive list of credentials. This is a research and discovery ship, first and foremost. Now with a former tactical officer as its new first officer. I'm curious though, a Kobliad, or half in your case, is an odd choice for first officer, given your vulnerable condition and all. But if, as an example, we found ourselves in a hostile situation, and you were suddenly incapacitated because you needed an infusion, what would happen then? You'd leave Captain Solano without an XO. 
Granted, that would be a worst-case scenario. But not outside the realm of possibility. That's very kind of you to be concerned about my well-being. But you don't need to trouble yourself on my account. I'll be fine. Well, I wouldn't say I was concerned. Just curious, that's all. Listen, can I be blunt, Commander? I see no reason to stop now. Commander Sutherland, your predecessor, was one of the best first officers in all of Starfleet. His record was impeccable and his reputation was without equal. I mean no disrespect, but the shoes you're stepping into are almost impossible to fill. He was loved by the crew. And he was one of my closest friends. So I can only hope that you'll live up to expectations. I don't think I could ever replace Commander Sutherland. And it would be a mistake to even try. Seeing as Captain Solano is on the Starbase, let me give you an update on this Ion Storm we're flying into. It's... unusual. Unlike anything I've ever seen. At the moment, I can't tell you if the Resolute will shrug it off, or if we're putting ourselves at risk. However, if we learn more about its patterns, its nature, we can come up with a scientific countermeasure. Just a moment. Energy wave inbound on screen. Tracing its trajectory. Starbase docking clamps are holding. The storm's emissions are fluctuating, coming in waves. And if my projections are right, we're about to get hit by a wide band burst of ionic energy, like a tsunami. I'm reading power abnormalities all over the ship. Red alert. Aye. Evacuating main gangway and retracting. Putting sensor visualization on screen. With the structural integrity field shut down, we can't take a direct hit. Time to impact. One minute. Shield systems are severely impacted. We have limited protection. I need every available solution. What are our options? We can weaken the impact of the storm with a deflector pulse. There's a better way. I'm sending all auxiliary power to the deflector dish. Send the aux power to the shields. We can't reactivate the entire shield bubble, but it's a directional threat. So we can orient all we have towards the wave. You have to believe me. We only get one shot at this. We can't afford to get it wrong. That's right, which is why we need to send power to our shields. Bedrosian, get those shields up. Rerouting power to shields. Stand by. I need a heading. We've only got one shot. Understood. On my command. Heading locked. Raise shields. This is it. All hands, brace for impact. Radiation supercharged the plasma, forcing it to backflush through the system and creating a dangerous imbalance. That can blow out every primary system on the ship. Just tell us where you need us. I need you to traverse the hull to the access port to recalibrate the port nacelle plasma regulator. We've reached the first access point. Understood. Do you see the override for the level one failsafe circuits? Okay, uh, I have no idea whether I made the right decision right there, but I can only hope so. Uh, I mean, I was kind of thinking the deflector might actually make more sense, but I don't know. I just went with the I just went with the shield. I don't know. It should allow anyway. us to stop the EPS flow to the warp engine without triggering an automatic core shutdown. Now we just got to do our little interlocks right here. Just uncouple them, connect them, and there we go. Are you sure? I am registering some crosstalk in the bypass circuit. We need to route the signals so they don't interfere with each other.
Diaz to Resolute. The fail-safes are temporarily disabled. Moving on to the EPS regulator. Heads up, Carter. What is that? One of the discharges coalesced. It's coming right toward us. I'm gonna try to disrupt it with my phaser. Oh, here we go. Phaser fire. All right, let's do it. Ooh, I like it. I like it. Okay, we got to be a bit careful with that, though. Don't want to shoot ourselves by mistake. Not that there's really an up, but, you know. Oh, okay, we got to use our phaser to clear a path. Okay, good to know. flow to the port nacelle we have little time before it causes an overload in the engine you must work efficiently EPS manifold adjusters reset to neutral I was so incredibly worried right there. I was so worried that I was going to die. I don't even know whether this is the right thing to do. The EPS lines to the port warp engine are back in balance. Almost done. Once I cycle the manifold nozzles, chill luck can... that other docking clamp or the hull will be ripped apart. There's a problem. The clamps are supposed to disengage automatically in an emergency, but it's not working. Not working? What are our options? The docking clamps are fitted with exploding bolts for an emergency release. We've got crew out there. That'd be like setting off a bomb next to them. Maybe there's another way. Starbase is hailing us. Put them through. Resolute, the remaining mooring arm is failing. You need to disengage from the Starbase now. The damage to the station will be catastrophic. The docking clamp isn't functioning. We're exploring our options. The option is to detonate the emergency release. Commander, hear me out. Reverse the polarity of the hull, which theoretically will repel the docking clamps. And repel the engineering crew right off the hull into the storm. This is Captain Solano. Put me on screen. Go ahead. Captain, we have a situation. Commander, what are you doing? Blow the bolts on the docking clamp. The captain doesn't know the whole story. I'm giving you an order! Jara? All due respect, sir, it's a more complex situation than when you Jara. disembarked. 
I need you to do the right thing. We can't have this go sideways before we even leave for the mission! The captain made himself quite clear. They're gonna get hammered with debris out there. Reverse the polarity. There is protocol. And there are lives. Starbase, stand by. We're gonna flip hull polarity to disengage the clamps. Yes, Commander. Repair crew, this is Acting Captain Jara Rydek. Be advised, we are going to reverse hull polarity to free us from the remaining docking clamp. Tether yourself and deactivate your boots on my mark. Understood. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Mark! Perfect! Plasma imbalance is reaching critical condition. We are moments from primary system failure. I got it. Come on, Diaz, you can do it. You can do it, Diaz. Ah, oh, I'm so, I was so worried about that as well. substantial electromagnetic arc if you approach the main hull the way you came. But Commander, the way we came is the nearest airlock. There is an auxiliary hatch near you on the far end of the pylon. You must bring Miss Edsilar there to access the interior. Oh no, please. Oh dear. This is not good. If, if I have to fire my phaser one more time, I'm probably gonna die. Let's face it, I am not very good at that particular minigame. I'm at the auxiliary hatch. We made it. They're safe. Bringing the Sith fully online. Do it. I'm kind of wondering if he's been, uh, I don't know, possessed by some alien entity now or something. I don't know. <laughs> you can imagine the classic, classic storyline. I'm good. Help me with him.
Let's get this off. Medical. Got one wounded at my location. Carter. You don't look so good. You gotta be more careful. I just got here. I'm not ready to see you two get blown to space dust just yet. Now let's get you down to sickbay. Great. Status report. The repair crew made it inside. EPS flow is back to nominal levels. The SIF is back up. How does this affect mission readiness, Mr. Ermat? Releasing the docking clamps using hull polarity minimized damage to the Resolute. We'll have some last-minute repairs to make, but if we reapportion some of the staff, we can make our departure on time. As of now, however, we are successfully moored to the station. Good to hear. Send updates to my ready room. Commander Rydek, with me. You disobeyed my orders. Well? Respectfully, Captain. I made the right choice, given the information I had- You disobeyed my orders! And not just in front of the bridge crew, but the Starbase staff as well! That's going to get around. My name's already tarnished around the fleet. But what is it going to do to my credibility on this ship? From the top to the bottom. Bridge to lower decks. I told you I'd be honest. But I also owe you more respect as captain of this ship. And I'll do better, living up to that. I expect as much from you. You might have won some fans on the bridge with that stunt, but not everyone. Lieutenant Commander Chovak has already bent my ear. I'm sure he doesn't take it personally. He'll get over it in time. Mr. Chovak is more complicated than he would want to admit. I guess we all are. And, if I'm being honest, I'm not sure what I would have done in the moment either. You never really know if you weren't in those shoes. So, let's just boil it down to you did what you had to. That'll have to be good enough for me. Thank you for understanding, sir. I'm sure no one knows the burden of command, as well as you do. I'm sure you will, someday. Despite it all, we got our final Starfleet clearance to depart. So if you'll fetch Mr. Ermot, we'll knock out the final details of any outstanding repairs, and then we'll set out for Hotari. Yes, sir. All departments reporting full mission readiness. We've got our full complement on board. This is my favorite moment, right now. The start of a new mission is always full of possibility. The Orion Syndicate could sell it as a drug. <laughs> Don't let the Admiralty hear you say that. Captain on the bridge. Sit. Sit, everyone. You all know, I'm not big on speeches. We're embarking on the first mission since our refit. Let's make it a good one. Disengage docking clamps. Docking clamps released. Thrusters ahead, Mr. Handar.
set a course for the Hotari system. Prepare to go to war paint. Aye, Captain. You know what? You take this one. Me? Engage. Thank you. I'm fine. Really, I... Uh, you don't look so good. I have to get to sickbay. Go. And I think that's actually where we're going to finish this episode and we're going to have a look and see what happens next time. Anyway, uh, let's just quickly go over how we did with every single person and, and our relationship with them. And as you can see, Captain Solano still had misgivings about his orders being defied, but remained willing to place his trust in his new first officer to live up to expectations. Lieutenant Bedrosian appreciated Jara's leadership skills when Starbase ordered her to disengage the docking clamps, and she thought highly of Jara's efforts to explain the complexity of the situation to Captain Solano. And she was relieved when Jara defied Captain Solano's orders and made her own command decision in the moment. Commander Westbrook was impressed by Jara's leadership skills when Starbase ordered her to disengage the docking clamps and he applauded her efforts to explain the complexity of the situation. Ultimately, he was thankful when Jara defied Captain Solano's orders and made her own command decision in the moment. Okay, so they're all just saying the same thing, basically. And uh, they're actually pretty happy with that. Unfortunately, uh, Mr. Mr. Vulcan here, <laughs> if, if we can take a... A quote from Neelix right there. Uh, he's not approving of that uh, because he wanted the the bolts to be exploded, you know. And uh, that's that's pretty much all we have right there. But with Carter, who do we have? Well, we just have the three people. And as you can see, she was grateful when Carter put her safety ahead of his own out on the hull. And then we also have Miranda felt encouraged by Carter's warm reception. We already saw that and respectful and so on and so forth. So we already saw that as well. Anyway, that is going to be it for this episode. We'll hopefully be back for another one. I really want to see what happens. That was so incredibly intense, that episode. Um, I just hope that those phaser sections are not as difficult in the future because that was really hard, and in my opinion. <laughs> Way too hard for the first time, but maybe that's just me. Anyway. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.